Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to generate a linear Cartesian movement. Uh, so uh, the end effector describes a linear uh, movement to reach from one point to another point. Okay? The trajectory behind uh, that linear movement is still a cubic trajectory in terms of the displacement of how much we progress over this linear trajectory. Okay, I will, I will give details about that. Okay? In the video description you have a document with all the maths that are behind uh, this uh, particular code because we need to compute the inverse kinematics that we explained in a previous video but also we need to compute the forward kinematics. Okay? Uh, so following the, the, the ideas of the previous videos uh, we have already in, uh, described some of the functions that we need in, uh, for this particular example so I'm not going to explain them, okay? but I will explain the new ones. So let's take a look to the code and let's move to uh, the syscall init function. Okay? Here uh, at the beginning this part here hasn't changed too much, remember that we are here just simply getting the handles of some specific joints so we can compute the geometric relations here, distances between joints and, uh, and some geometric parameters of this robot but we could do that uh, by hand okay, if we know the displacements. Okay? I just simply prefer to do it like that so it's supposed to be more exact. Uh, here the difference is that I will provide four points, in this case uh, these three points I indicated with uh, a given numbers in the Cartesian space I would like to reach and the last one I would like to return to the original position which is Q0 uh, it's actually this Q0 here, it's the same as before, but now I use the forward kinematic function that will give me the actual position of the end effector for a given configuration. Okay, we will explain this uh, function later, okay? But anyway, uh, here the difference is that now I compute uh, uh, what I call the compute trajectory line function, it accepts uh, initial configuration it accepts a sequence of points I would like to move and again the time intervals that I want to spend on each of these trajectories as well as the uh, kinematic parameters of this robot, the geometry basically. Okay? And again I have a number of points and then I execute uh, or evaluate these trajectories I generate here just here in the syscall actuation function by setting the joints to the corresponding position. Okay? So let's take a look to the compute trajectory line function which is somewhere here, yep. And uh, this function it actually it's merging or it's joining a set of trajectories that I use in this case the move L instruction, okay? Uh, this instruction it's reproducing or emulating the rapid instruction that we use for ABB robots that requires initial, uh, in this case, uh, configuration where the robot is and requires a final um, point I would like to reach. But the difference with respect to the move J instruction is that the displacement in the Cartesian space of the end effector will be totally linear. Okay? We will see that. Okay? Uh, as before, uh, we need to use the inverse kinematic here so that for the next movements we know uh, the last configuration we had from the previous uh, point of that trajectory, so that's why we use this uh, inverse schematic inside here. Okay? So let's take a look to the uh, move L instruction. Sorry. This move L instruction, uh, it's uh, as I said before, uh, accepting initial configuration, a final point and a time to spend or to generate that trajectory. It's using the forward kinematics uh, in order to compute from Q0, compute the initial point in the Cartesian space, so this is actually a point in the Cartesian space, and the difference compared to what we have before in the move J instruction is that now the qubit trajectory it's done in the Cartesian space, so that I generate a qubit trajectory to move from P0 to PT and that gives me a set of parameters for that specific trajectory in the Cartesian space. And that's what I'm doing here later is uh, just simply evaluating this trajectory so for every time instant I want I have a point in the Cartesian space. 
okay? So it's exactly the same function, actually. It doesn't matter if we evaluate uh, a cubic trajectory in the configuration space or the Cartesian space, it's still a cubic trajectory on that specific space, okay? So here, as I said, I have a set of points in the Cartesian space that I translate into the configuration space, which is the actual thing that we need for a robot uh, using the inverse kinematics. So every point in that trajectory we are using, for every point in the trajectory we are using the inverse kinematic uh, function, so we know the actual angles that we want, okay? So this forward kinematic uh, function, the rest of the functions are exactly as we have seen before, but this forward kinematic function here is just uh, simply uh, computing uh, the required math so that for a given uh, configuration I know how or the position of x, y and z of the end effector, uh, the tip of the gripper, and these maths are ex I've been explained in the, in the document that I include in the video description, okay? So once we have seen everything here, uh, let me just simply uh, run the simulation and see how it works, okay? As you can see, the trajectory is completely linear in the Cartesian space, but because we're using the inverse kinematic, then the joint or the configuration space here, the trajectory of the joints, they don't have to be linear, okay? And actually, if you take a look here, it starts slowly, here moves faster, and then here decelerates a little bit due to this cubic trajectory during the displacement of the linear trajectory, okay? I hope uh, you could see it properly. Okay, thank you very much.